In the 1950s, JNR, still managing long non-electrified lines, faced the challenge of rapidly increasing transportation demand. While the modernization was underway with the DF-50, which often required double heading, it was replaced by the more powerful DD-51. However, the dual-engine setup was economically unfavorable for maintenance, leading to growing calls for a high-output single-engine locomotive. Responding to this demand, Mitsubishi proposed the DD-91, an 1800-horsepower locomotive equipped with a German Maybach MD-80 engine and Mikhydro transmission. The Mikhydro transmission combined one hydraulic transmission with a four-speed mechanical transmission, making it smaller and lighter than the Voith system used in the DD-51, which had three hydraulic transmissions. Additionally, the Mikhydro transmission did not require oil management operations within the transmission, reducing oil degradation from oxidation and foaming, allowing usage in higher temperature environments, and enabling the hydraulic transmission and its cooling structure to be smaller. The transmission was directly connected to the engine, outputting on the same side as the input, routed under the car body to straddle the middle bogey, and driving both end-powered bogies via universal joints. Radiators were placed with ample space on both sides of the car body, cooled by a centrally located precision hydraulic driven fan. However, shifting gears and operating multiple clutches while running required advanced precision control technology, and only West Germany had been able to mass produce it for locomotive class output. Since the operational results of the DD91 were generally favorable, it was decided to mass-produce it, leading to the birth of the DD-54. At that time, with almost no support system from overseas manufacturers, adopting overseas parts as they were was avoided in terms of maintenance. Instead, a licensed production system was adopted to domestically produce the engine and transmission, considered the heart of the locomotive. Even with a licensing agreement, the Germans were unlikely to readily teach the critical parts of their prized technology. Even though the engine was derated to 1820 horsepower, the 2000 horsepower intercooled turbo engine with a displacement of 86 liters was truly an uncharted territory at that time. Furthermore, domestic production of the mechanically complex four-speed automatic transmission was a significant challenge. Unlike the DD91, the DD54 emerged with a modern design, standing out among the increasingly common center cap type diesel locomotives. The first generation had headlights mounted above the cab, but from the second generation onward, they were moved to the lower part, and from the third generation, H rubber was used in the cab window frames, with the design evolving over the generations. The engine output of 1820 horsepower was suitable for replacing the D51 and C57 in terms of output at wheel rim and was deployed mainly on the Sanin line and Bantan line. As a dual-purpose locomotive for both passenger and freight use, it was well suited for simultaneous replacement, primarily on the Sanin line and Bantan line. Structurally, unlike the DF50 and DD51, which did not interrupt engine sound during traction, the DD54's engine sound was interrupted during gear shifts, making it distinctive. Due to the immature control technology, 
the transmission shock during gear shifts was significant, sometimes causing severe impacts on the following cars. These shocks during gear shifts later led to various troubles, resulting in the term pole vault appearing in newspaper headlines. The team of engineers bravely challenged Germany's exceptional precision machine control technology and faced many difficulties.